Kane Pixels uploaded yet another video. That means that's two uploads in a month. That's extremely rare. I decided to sit down and react to it, break it down, analyze it. Just overall, check it out. But Brooklyn, this video came out last week. You're a week late. I was actually on a vacation. I took some of my friends on a fall break trip. That's beside the point. We're back now. All right, here we go. Let's let's check it out. Backrooms lighting and tile survey. Preliminary notes. Okay, let's watch it. Aww. I'm assuming this is gonna be some informational style of video. Um, maybe like a worker's handbook type thing, but I'm gonna hold my judgment till the end. Today is November 14th. November 14th. It's a great day of the year. Aww. There's the back rooms. Man, that's the back rooms if I've ever seen it, folks. It is incredibly cold. Interesting. It's cold. Does that mean the back rooms follows oh, real life seasons? It's hard for the decent uh, heating system down here. Look at this. Die of hypothermia. Okay, so I guess that means in Kane's lore, the backrooms kind of follows real life weather patterns. In November, it's usually pretty cold, so maybe that means they're cold. I don't know. Oh, hello, camera. Police just dropped you in the bin right there. Make sure to get the red one, right? Because the, uh, the green one reached. One four. Make the red one because the green won't reach. Okay, makes sense. I'm hearing some weird noises uh, from the music he's, he's put in this video. Speaking of which, his music uh, is amazing. It's literally fantastic. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Okay. So we're gonna watch these dudes maybe mess with some tiles. Oh, an ad. Yay! So I'm guessing we're gonna watch this guy. Yep. Take some tiles. Moving the tiles. These are like the ones in drop ceilings. At my old uh, house as a child, I had ceilings like this, so I understand. And in school, I guess too. Leave a like if you had same tiles in school. What could be hiding up here in the tiles, ladies and gents? Probably nothing. Well, there's no insulation on top, and I'm seeing a bunch on the floor above. So there is insulation, which is interesting. Well, there's ventilation as well. You see that? You see the vents? So yeah, that's weird. There's vents leading up to, I guess, like an outside area, and there's no insulation on the top, but insulation under the roof, which I guess is kind of the floor. That means that this backrooms area, or level zero, is some kind of basement. I, I'm gathering, I think. I'm not an engineer, but that's what I'm gathering. Some it's insulated, I think. Interesting. I don't know, I'm not a vent guy, I don't know. Yeah, same, yeah, I'm not a vent guy either. Oh, Wait, so vents? No rust. That is pretty weird. It just looks like... Brand new metal, leading up to a vent. That's very odd to me. Huh. It's more than one uh, floor, and I use that term loosely. There's we more than one floor. We then attempted to cut power to the nearest fluorescent light fixture, a standard troffer. Okay. However, we were unable to isolate the power source and the conduit remains live, despite the Okay, just right there. They were unable to cut the power and the conduit remained live despite the absence of any visible external power supply. That pretty much proves the headcanon that many have that the backroom's power or whatever in lore, in the canon, I guess, is infinite, which is pretty neat. Pretty cool. I like that he's doing this kind of world building thing. Not every video has to be scary Ooh. you know what i'm saying these little lore building things kind of get the uh, universe to become more real i like it absence of any visible external power supply the source of electrical current remains unknown at this time well it's just magic Even sorry sorry toolkit, lady we carefully isolated the light fixture from its electrical conduit uh, extracted the troffer from the ceiling and transported it back inside uh, back to standard for analysis okay um and they added a, a 0.5 meter sample of conduit was also taken uh, with all exposed wiring safely secured afterwards in the ceiling. So the ceiling tile extracted okay. measures 1.27 meters by That's way bigger than normal. Meters, which is certainly not standard. Um, yeah, way bigger than normal. It's composed primarily of uh, mineral fiber 
uh, seems normal in composition, has sufficient texture with uh, mild tegular edges. So after initial analysis, the, the composition of the tile estimated is um, around 60% wow. mineral wool, which is uh, fibers of amorphous silicate, um, usually derived from, uh, I think it's basalt or swag, um, around 20% uh, expanded perlite so um, That's That's pretty interesting. I like that. I like the scientific approach to this. This is cool. So pretty much they just took down the ceiling tile and the electrical uh, components above, took it into the lab, whatever, for analysis, and now they're kind of just talking about what it's made out of. That is a huge question throughout the backroom stuff. Why are things there? How are they not decaying? Who put them there? Why is there so much physical material there? And this is kind of giving, I guess, answers in, in the Kane universe. Interesting. Uh, primarily of silicon dioxide and aluminium oxide. And aluminium is, is wild. On fine mixture of um, silicate material, some starch, latex polymers, um, and, and some organic fibers derived from plant materials. Okay. Um, recycled cellulose, really. Uh, but the light trough or housing is made of galvanized, oh, galvanized steel, steel, dude. A thin layer. Every time I hear galvanized steel, I think of those like AI videos on TikTok where they're making living rooms and bedrooms inside of tiny apartments. If you know, you know. Inside, the fluorescent bulbs are non-standard in proportion, most closely resembling T12 Yeah, they're bigger, bulbs. they're fatter than so usual the four real life bulbs. measure 1.2 meters in length with a diameter of 38.1 Much wider. Millimeters. Uh, we're extrapolating here, only 51. But that all the end waves and the rest contain uh, the following components. Phosphor coating, the calcium uh, hemophosphate for converting ultraviolet light to visible light. Okay. Um, mercury vapor a, in, in a small quantity, which facilitates the, the ultraviolet light. I mean, yeah, that'll make it um, brighter. Argon gas. And again, this is all standard for these uh, fluorescent bulbs. That's like normal, though, um, for real life. That's yeah. an inert gas that assists with, the, uh, with regulating the current and, and really starting the bulbs. Um, and they, they are connected via a G13 base, which is a standard two-pin base yeah, it's with pretty normal. 13 millimeter spacing for electrical connection. So the wiring connected to the fixture is PVC insulated copper, which appears again. That's standard. normal. Again, uh, pretty much if you wouldn't do a school building in the USA that has fluorescent lights and has a drop ceiling tiles, these components would essentially be what you'd find. This is not crazy. This is not out of the ordinary. And this is it's actually weird how normal it is. The prismatic diffuser over the bulbs is made of polymethyl methacrylate. It's like opaque um, plastic. Again, commonly used for yep. its light diffusion properties. I mean, it's, it's, it's what we have in the building here. Very standard. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we also inspected the ballast, which is of the electromagnetic type. Um, there's, there's some variation in how they're being manufactured now. This one contains a laminated steel core and uh, copper windings designed to operate at 60 hertz. So the ballast emits a prominent 120 hertz hum. That's where you get the buzzing from. This to be the from. case for okay. the majority, if not all, of the lights in the complex that we've assessed thus far, um, mostly just through through uh, simple curing. But but this is is, is due to uh, magnetostriction um, and core vibration. The, but the noise may be exacerbated by loose elimination plates. Or yeah, so that's why there's so much that, the that famous hum in the back rooms is coming from um, that. So it's definitely an indication that this has been running for a little bit. I mean. Despite its age, the, the ballast is functional. Um, its large proportions suggest it was built for a, a non-standard space, not something you find in the majority of offices or... Uh, so I guess these are pictures of old office buildings, maybe with the first kind of fluorescent lights and drop ceilings. I don't think I can read the text on here. commercial spaces, though that's something that yeah, that's just not like something I'm stuff. too familiar with, truthfully. Now, we, we did find... So material compositions all seem expected, or, or, or we, don't, we don't know what to expect here. They, they, they seem, everything we've looked at so far, um, again, this is rudimentary early testing, but everything seems pretty congruent with what you might expect from yeah. one of the, uh, the <coughs> trophy lights you could But that's what makes it so weird, though, in, in this, that it's normal. In this building right here. Um, so nothing too strange, but, but it's maybe... That maybe makes things seem stranger. Because um, we look at these lights and. Um, yeah, that's what I just said. I'm taking it. So, several labels um, were marked on, on various components of the, the troffer. Um, 
thrown the ballast. We, we found uh, markings for uh, marked as a universal ballast, uh, type A, manufactured in... Okay, so now we're saying there's stickers and like manufacturing uh, chain codes on these different uh, parts. Very interesting. Manufacturing 1975, serial number A75234X. 1975 with serial number Universal A MFG core. 75234X. Um, the tracker so, itself is stamped uh, 3X. Meaning that this was, these are real materials. Um, this means, that I guess. manufactured in uh, 1973 Reading, Pennsylvania. in Reading, Pennsylvania. By Reading, Pennsylvania. And, and it is UL listed. Um, and the bulbs um, were manufactured by um, Sylvania. So there are branding. There is SW, you know, brands are, uh, are on these on these instruments um, with no visible date information. Uh, it's left blank, but it is noted as made in the USA. Okay. So, I mean, though outdated in design, the picture appears fully functional. The the stable operation yeah. of all light fixtures in the subdivision points to a continuous, uh, potentially autonomous power source. That's what I was which, saying at the beginning. Uh, People think that it's infinite. Um, but as far as like human knowledge goes, we don't, we can't understand infinite energy. I guess like uh, Nikola Tesla was kind of getting into that stuff. But for people to find this and, you know, cut the source to the light and the lights still work, kind of those are for a little loopsy do. Um, the materials used are durable with minimal visible wear, suggesting they were built for long term, yeah. possibly indefinite use. That is, that is very weird. That is very odd. And actually kind of eerie, especially as that, as that music builds. Let's just hear this again. The materials used are durable with minimal visible degradation or whatever it minimal says. Minimal visible wear. Suggesting wear. they were built for long term, possibly indefinite use. Possibly indefinite use. Uh, that whole sentence is quite eerie. Let's just do it one more time. Sorry. Minimal visible wear. Suggesting they were built for long term, possibly indefinite use. Okay. So this concludes the initial findings. Um, further investigation. Necessary to Ready, Pennsylvania. All right, lot to unpack there, lot to deduce. Let's do it. So the main takeaway for me in this video is, well, it's really two things. One thing is that it kind of confirms in universe, or at least in the Kane Pixels lore system, that the back rooms, especially level zero, specifically level zero, has an infinite and undamageable power source. As they said at the beginning, um, they cut the the wires to the lights the lights still function properly. The second weird thing, the second finding in this video that I that I think is really cool is the the listing of the stickers and the manufacturing on the the specific components. That is interesting as well. That could mean a couple things in and of itself. That could mean that the backrooms was created and uh, man-made by some greater uh, underground organization that we don't know about or it could mean that the backrooms is a physical I guess entity itself and it made itself based off of real life parts and it kind of took these bits and pieces from our life and our universe and kind of crumbled itself together into making level zero and that's how we get these real parts and these real components because as they said they are outdated uh for real life standards and they're not as broken down or old appearing as they should be for for the parts that they are as as they say at the end perhaps indefinite use Right here. With minimal visible wear, suggesting they were built for long term, possibly indefinite use. Exactly. No matter how old they seem or how old they actually are, they haven't worn down to what they typically should. There's no rust, there's no breaking, there's no cracks or whatever. And uh, that's that's pretty odd. The other thing I want to uh, bring your attention to is kind of what was shown in the beginning here when this guy looked up in the, the rafters. I find this very interesting and they kind of just brushed over it. This puts the back rooms as a basement. This is exactly how my basement in real life is constructed. I have the floor above, which is insulated like this, the drop ceiling down below, and a little foot, foot and a half gap in between to my basement. And that's exactly how this is constructed as well. Meaning that something is indeed above the back rooms and it seems to be infinite. I mean, these wood, these wood trusses and wood boards here don't seem to have breaks in the joists and there is an HVAC unit or like a, I guess you could say like tunnel uh, running through ventilating air out and that means that the backrooms is a basement and it is under something so maybe we'll figure out what exactly it's under maybe we'll figure out 
what's above it. Who knows? I mean, the lady in the video did say that there's a possibility of there being multiple floors. That's the very first thing she said. More than one uh, floor, and I use that term loosely. Other observations for me include uh, the, these vents here. It's very, very odd that there are vents. I guess that means that whoever built this went into it knowing that there would be a limited supply of oxygen, which means that that thing or that person or that whatever it is knew that people would be here and need oxygen. That's odd in and of itself. And another weird thing is that the lights themselves are non-typical in their size. They said that these are, you know, like two by four meters or whatever. It's huge for a, a drop ceiling. They're normally like maybe two feet max, which definitely puts it at a very strange interval. And the fact that all these lights emit that same buzz is again, like I said, it's non-typical. So pretty much I say all that, all that blabbering just to say the lights and what's above the ceiling is possibly the weirdest thing that no one ever talks about. Like the backrooms is weird in and of itself. Yes, it's this infinite non-typical liminal space, but it's underneath something, obviously, and in the K and Pixels lore, that proves it. I mean, this is literally just how my basement in real life is constructed, just like this, and I'm sure some of y'all are, uh, y'all's are as well. So that's very weird. The drop ceiling that confirms there's something above it. The lights being infinite, uh, even though the power source is cut, proves that there's an infinite power source. And lastly, these these chain codes and these these manufacturing codes prove that these parts are either from real life or copied directly from real life. It could be like the the entity of the backrooms or like if the backrooms was alive, I say in heavy quotes, it somehow control C, control V, real life components to make itself into here. Who knows? And lastly, I also find it very weird at the beginning. The date is November 14th, 1989. And the first thing we hear is that it's a Tuesday and that it's freezing cold. It is incredibly, incredibly cold. cold. The backrooms has no heating and air conditioning, it seems, which is, again, very odd considering there is power going to it. There is lighting. Um, you would think there might be some climate control and there is ductwork that would lead to the fact that there should be that. This tunnel here is, I guess, what you would uh, see in real life that carries heating and cooling to different parts. However, it's incredibly cold, as this person says, it means that uh, it doesn't work. Or, or somehow the backrooms follows real life seasons. I mean, November 14th would be pretty cold in most parts of the uh, Western world. I also wonder if these specific pictures uh, lead to any easter eggs or anything perhaps if you broke down these views if you broke down what what figure number it is and as well as these these charts here i wonder if they mean more than meets the eye as well maybe we'll have to get map pad on the case and i wonder if these specific companies and these specific dates the manufacturing stuff i wonder if that has anything to do with anything as well finally i want to end off with this little quote here i mean though outdated in design the picture appears fully functional. The, the stable operation of all light fixtures in the subdivision points to a continuous, uh, potentially autonomous power source, which uh, still remains unidentified. Exactly. Uh, right there. All of that, all of that science and stuff they just said just leads to what many people already theorized, that there is an autonomous power source that fuels the back rooms, and it does so from an unknown place. And that is pretty much the biggest takeaway, minus all the stuff I said uh, just now. So yeah, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed this reaction, breakdown, analysis, whatever you want to call it video, uh, leave a like. I love doing these kind of things. And this video was honestly one of the most interesting that Kane has produced so far. I really love the world building aspect and just going over these, these real questions that many people in the fandom have, uh, like, What's above the back rooms? Why is there a drop ceiling? Why are the uh, the lights infinite? Why do they never go off? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Check out the original video below and uh, link more videos below that you want me to check out and analyze. I'm so down to do it. I love doing this kind of thing, and I know my analysis isn't like Sherlock Holmes level, but I do think I bring up some decent points, and I might be uh, I might be qualified to talk about the back rooms since I made 600 videos about it. Yeah, thank you for all you do. I love and appreciate each every one of you. Uh, if you want more of me. Check out the description for my social media, Twitter, Instagram, my other channel, Spoogly. Lots of stuff over there. Lots more stuff coming. Love and appreciate y'all. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.